<clears throat> All right, so this is going to be the worst video ever because I'm bad at this and uh, I don't have a lot of practice yet. But I was asked to explain um, where the algebras of form came from, well, how they work, and I think in order to sort of understand that, it helps understand why you'd bother doing this at all because it's really just sort of an alternate mathematical notation. And so th uh, this idea comes from an alternate logical notation. So if you're familiar with Boolean algebra, you might have had a logic class. Um, you're used to things like a and b, or a or b, or if a then b. And you represent all these statements using particular operators for each independent um, function, right? So a, or, <coughs> and implication all get their own special symbols. Um, but a guy named uh, uh, George Spencer Brown uh, wrote something called Laws of Form in 1969. And it's not a totally unique idea. Other people had this idea. <clears throat> Charles Sanders Peirce's prepositional logic is fairly similar. Read the Wikipedia page about this if you're interested. It's got a lot of good detail, links to Kaufman's papers on this stuff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but basically the idea was that uh, all you need to do is create a distinction, a mark. Um, and so uh, this was what he proposed as a mark. Um, other people have used different things like parentheses and whatnot, but um, we'll stick with his original notation. And he pointed out that uh, in terms of logical statements, um, two similar statements is as good as the first distinction. It's sort of one way of interpreting this phrase, but it's really a statement about duplication. So if you have uh, a logical statement A and a logical statement B, or sorry, A again, then you might as well only have said A once. Um, <clears throat> so um, in addition to defining sort of a mark, he defined the marked mark, or unmark, as it were. Um, and this gives you this basic binary logic, right? So um, the way he set it up, he assumed that uh, the marked state was true, and that the doubly marked or unmarked state is false, and uh, <clears throat> um, developed all of his logic from there. So in, in that system, A and B look something like this, both A and B and the entire form are marked. A or B is just A and B adjacent to each other. If A then B looks something like this. Um, you can see how or works uh, with this little truth table. So for A or B, A can either be marked or the unmarked state. <clears throat> the same with B, depending on uh, which state uh, uh, they're in, you will get uh, the result, right? This is pretty much similar to the or function, assuming that uh, the marked state is true. Now, <clears throat> I think this is a little bit contradictory because if this is not A, that implies that the, the marked state itself has some kind of negation associated with it. And actually, um, you can uh, think about this in the opposite sense where the unmarked state is true and the marked state is false. And that I think that makes a little bit more sense in terms of the logical application because um, the unmarked state functions like identity. So if you write some variable x and don't do anything to it, it's constantly being you know, multiplied by 1, as it were. It's, uh, the identity function uh, can be added in, in any moment. Whereas um, if you're trying to form the negation of something, that's when you actually need to invoke a symbol. So I think it's more natural, given uh, the way this works as a negation operation, to think of uh, the unmarked state as true. And that, com that becomes important with the idea of the algebra forms. But in that case, then uh, A and B and A or B switch places in terms of the representation. And if A, then B. Uh, looks a little bit different as well. So um, Varela, I forget what year he published this, I should have looked it up before this, um, he pointed out that really what's going on, there's a variable state that can be defined by contradiction, which seems to confuse the bejesus out of Lewis Kaufman. He writes a lot about this kind of oscillation that you get logically when you start to follow these recursive definitions, but he pointed out that a rule of dominance and a rule of duplication, so um, this is sort of a, a more general way of forming what I was saying about uh, saying any logical statement twice is as good as saying it once. Alternatively, um, uh, in terms of logical dominance, a, uh, a marked statement will uh, force uh, this kind of... Uh, 
adjacent AND or OR operator into having a marked result. <clears throat> um, anyway, so that's dominance.